It's Elk Week here at Born and Raised. Oh, yeah! We got new videos dropping every single day, 4 p.m. We've got calling, we've got gear dumps, shot angles, do's and don'ts of elk hunting, and the best elk hunting video, 20 kills in 20 minutes. <laughs> Can you believe that? Insane giveaways. If you missed a video, go check out the Elk Week oh playlist and get caught up. Make sure you're entered for all the giveaways. We've got tons of gear. We're announcing the winner every single day. Woo! This is why we came to Wyoming, buddy. <laughs>
I'm like, well, let's just hunt the head of the space. We'll end up here back tonight. I can throw this with my food bag, get it, it's dry, just an easy place, throw it at the base of the tree, take off and go hunting if we decide that we're gonna come back through there. But sleep system's pretty easy for me. The one thing that I run I, heavy, but it's based on comfort. I've got this Sea to Summer Comfort Plus. It's dual side fills, so it's got a fill on the top and the bottom. If we're going ultralight, I just have my bivy sack. And uh, most of the time, weather's good. It's not a bad little play. I also, I've got in my pack here my one-man tent. And for my sleep system, I run an enlightened equipment quilt. This is the Enigma. I think it's a 20 degree bag. Um, so with the insulation of the pad and this, super comfortable in September. A lot of times too, I'll just sleep in my clothes in that bag for some extra warmth. And if it's cold, cold forecast, I've got a Sea to Summit liner. This is just their polypropylene. It adds, I would say, a solid five to 10 degrees warmth inside your bag. Um, tent wise, we designed this for a full length zipper. The uh, standard EXO has just a top entry. I like this full length zipper. And access right here, this is my tent. I run a, it's called a Nemo Recurve. Um, it sets up with my trekking poles. So there's no poles for it. Um, it's four or six stakes and it's enough room to get my gear inside the tent. So for trekking poles, this is where I've got a pair of carbon light. Um, these are from SNS Archery. Extendable trekking poles, they've been bomb proof over, I don't know, I think I've used them about five years now. Um, I also use them every day for setting up my tent. The two things that I want access to pretty easily, it's gonna be water filter. So I've got platypus bags, these are all two liters. So I have capabilities of seven liters of water. If water is scarce, we gotta pack water. It's definitely something I try not to do uh, that much of. And then I use a Sawyer squeeze filter. This is on a quick disconnect, so you never have to pull out your bladder. You just hook this in, hook this to one of your dirty bags, and filter water straight into your pack. Next up, I carry a battery pack. This one is 20,000 milliamps. This is a RAV power. Got knife, and then for me, I wear a rope belt. So rope belt on my pants, ready to go. On the other side of the outside pocket, this is where I run my day bag for food. So I've got all my main, you know, future food stored in the bag, and this is my day food. Next on that side pocket on the lower side, carry beanie and a lightweight set of uh, gloves. So on the lid of this, on the top access, I carry three extra batteries, and then I've got one of my spare headlamps. So the cool thing, this is a Petzl attic and an attic core. So you can run either three AAA batteries or you can also run it with their rechargeable battery system. Also in that top lid, something that I always have a spare, if not two, they're super lightweight, smoke in the bottle. In my main lid pouch here, this is where we got wet wipes. I carry a contractor, trash bag, black trash bag. An emergency can work for a poncho, something to keep if you're just in a torrential downpour. Also, when you're packing meat after the meat gets cooled off, it's nice to line that on the outside of the bag, keep your uh, gear from getting too much blood on it. In here is kind of my possibles bag. So this is, um, I've got some medicine, I've got floss, Tylenol PM, spare lighter. So I've got Luco tape contacts, spare contacts, eye drops, Advil PM, ibuprofen. Next out of the lid, um, this is a somewhere device. So this is a satellite communication. This links straight to my phone and I can satellite text. It also has SOS capabilities. So if someone gets hurt, we can get a helicopter, get contact with search and rescue, anything like that. Um, this thing's been awesome. The other thing with the somewhere that's really cool, you can share Onyx waypoints to another phone that has this somewhere device. So if we wanna meet up, if we're split up in groups, we're communicating back and forth via satellite text, I can drop a waypoint, say, hey, meet here. This is where Trent killed a bull. Let's go meet up there and pack some meat. So it's definitely one uh, I would highly recommend if you're taking a trip into the backcountry. And last but not least, 
We've got some Zeiss lens wipes. This is good for binos, glasses, camera gear, anything like that. In the bottom of the main compartment, started carrying this. It's just a simple medic kit. And in here I've got quick clot. It's got some bandages, gauze, anything for kind of those heavy duty type injuries. It's got kind of all the just bare necessities for safety gear. And then pretty much covers most of the pack. If you open this top zipper up, this is the access to your bladder. But inside the bladder compartment is where I carry the rest of our meat bags. So I've got the four quarter zip bags rolled up, ready to go when you do kill one. And then inside on the zipper pouches, slide that open. This is where I keep tags. I also always pack some baby cream. Um, if you get chafed or anything like that, it's a quick, simple way to cure that overnight, put it on any uh, chafe spots or any hot spots. Also carry a work sharp pocket knife sharpener and another roll of Luco tape. So on the side pouches um, right here, it's where I carry extra diaphragm calls, um, cell phone goes in right there, and my third spare smoke in the bottle. You can see a trend there. Um, and then also on the other side, it's where I carry my headlamp. Oh, wait, and another smoke in the bottle. But that kind of covers everything that got a simple gear list. We'll put a link in the description. You guys can download that. Just kind of all the stuff that I've got with weights and ideas. I try to keep it simple and not get too much. The only thing that I'll carry spare clothes wise is going to be an extra pair of socks. I'll take two pairs of socks, trade them out. If you need to, you can rinse one in the creek, hang them off the back of your pack, get them dried out. So next up, we're going to cover Trent's pickup, kind of the whole base camp side of it. It's going to be a yard sale of gear, I'm not going to lie, but uh, let's go get into that one. Okay, so you went over with Cody and you went through all the kind of the backcountry segment of what's in my pack. Well, I'm more of your front country guy, if you will. Not to say we haven't done a ton of backcountry stuff, but I'm going to cover kind of what's in my truck. So. Deck reached out and I've had these for quite a while and actually I wasn't sure how I'd like them but I've actually kind of fell in love with them. They've been awesome. So, But at the same time, if you don't have a locking tailgate, they have actual locks that go in these for each individual truck so nobody can steal your stuff. The deck system is pretty cool because it can't just get lifted out either. You have to unbolt the whole thing all the way around and it comes out kind of in a clamshell deal. So in order to get it out, it'd be very difficult. So let's dive in. So this is my home away from home, honestly, all season long, pretty much as long as if we're bivying in, it's a different story. I've got kind of a system set up like Cody's, but for this, this is bulletproof. I mean, it's four buckle or three buckles, open it up and there you go. And I am, I'm living right there, living large. So I have slept in this hundreds, literally of nights, this same one. And it has been awesome for me in snow, rain, sleet you name it it's a it's a pretty bulletproof system and way to go because you can just throw it in the pickup and go you don't have to get that hotel room if you're just going to crash for a couple hours to get some sleep to try to make it to the next state if you're hunting like two two states simultaneously so works out good second thing food tote very simple just a tote with a bunch of food and some lights but not we don't usually use the lights that's like uh if we're gonna have some kind of a uh a pop-up system yeah I, I, I try to take everything okay you know i have been able to or known to flip a ribeye pretty well in my day so yeah all this kind of stuff simple it's all in one tote you could eat probably for a month out of this one tote so awesome inside as far as that goes cooler another thing you're probably going to have when you're hunting the quote-unquote front country okay Keep an ice in it and it'll always help too. If you have a bunch of ice, always pack more than you think because when you kill something, usually you need ice maybe to throw it on. So keep that kind of stuff around. If I was gonna do some kind of a system to where we're gonna set up a base camp. So our pickup, we're gonna hunt from the same base camp every day. If I'm not gonna do the canvas cutter, if it's a little bit colder, I have this. This is the Seek Outside Courthouse, they call it. It's actually pretty darn good size. 
and it also comes with a stove jack. So super lightweight. I don't get too elaborate as far as stoves go. And if you have a saw or whatnot with you, you can cut little sticks, make a fire in it, keep your stuff warm, dry out your stuff if you get soaking wet. So that's my top of my deck kind of thing. You've got food, you've got shelter with a canvas cutter or this system, and then you've got more food and beverage. When you're hunting front country, it's a must. Let's dive into the deck system. Okay, so right off the bat, spare sleeping bag. If I'm going to run this route, probably I'm going to throw a sleeping bag in it or just an extra one for more warmth or whatever. This is a whole gun. It'll take a whole gun and then some. So this system actually comes out to here and it locks in to where you have to push it forward pretty hard to actually get it to move, but, but it slides super easy as you can tell. So what you have is a lot of storage back underneath of here. Anyway, you'll see in my other one what I have in, in that, but this will hold at least two, maybe three guns in it. And um, so that's in there. I've always have my rifles in there and they're always locked away in a dry storage. So, and these trays on the outside, always, always have some sort of wipes. Two ply is good. Uh, Angel Soft is good. Wipes are a necessity. And flashlight, tie down straps, some tape, just stuff like that. Just various stuff that I throw in. I'll, I'll have a lot of bullets sometimes in here. Uh, ammo, stuff like that. So that does it for drawer number one. All right, what's behind door number two? So door number two, game bags. I don't have mine cool, packed away, super, super. I would usually normally like in the backcountry situation, like the video that Cody did, I would normally vacuum seal these things so they're super compressed and no air in them. That way no water gets to them and they can't ever mildew or anything like that. But I don't in this case, because we're hunting the front country, right? It's gonna be off the road. We're dragging it to a road. So pack, that goes in. So I put my pack in here. It stays dust free. It stays waterproof. That way I don't have to have it in the back of the pickup. If it's snowing, raining, something of that nature, I don't want to put on a wet pack. So I will take my pack and put it in here. That way it's done, all packed up, ready to rock and roll. I'll go in the back first. Axe, this is just tiny axe, super, super sharp. An axe is always a good thing to have. Uh, whether you're pounding tent stakes or chopping little limbs out of the way or whatever you need, always, and I'm gonna repeat this again, always have at your service a telecast, some kind of Excalibur, some kind of a telescoping rod with a Panther Martin always tied to the end of it. You have used this more times than you would ever imagine. I have caught our dinner, I don't know. Cody wouldn't be alive today if I didn't have this rod, let's just say that. I have this hitch in here, I'm not real sure why, but this is in here too. So jumper cables, gotta have those. Go back in the back here. Okay, toe straps. Not that the tradesman has ever been stuck before. Do not show previous footage either. But if you ever need to pull someone else out, you've got, the, you've, got the, you've got what it takes. So anyway, and these also have just a big tie down step. Just nice to have stuff that you can tie down. That's what I have in my just small system. You could put so much more stuff in here. Extra Panther Martins. And if you see how I took some uh, toilet paper and wadded it up, that's for throwing it in your pack so it won't rattle around. Ish, ish. Just like Cody's system, I do have a Sawyer filter on me at all times if I run into a situation where I have to pump water. These things are awesome, bulletproof, easy, super lightweight. Uh, some knives, zip ties, everybody knows you need zip ties, lighters, Earplugs, I got a bunch of earplugs, duct tape, all sorts of different little knickknacks and stuff, whatever you would have if you're normally gonna go on a long trip and you just need stuff. These are for fish, a bunch of Ziploc bags. Anyway, that's my system for the deck. And if you find it difficult to live out of what I've just showed you, you're living way too large right now. So back her down just a couple notches because this I thought was pretty elaborate. Okay, so we are into the box now. Everything that we've kind of talked about already, you could live for months off of, but we're taking it a step further. So along with the, the deck part, they make a box that fits in the long bed. So the long bed's actually, the deck system only goes back to here 
on that because they couldn't make a drawer that goes eight feet long and still guarantee that you could hold 200 pounds in it with it all the way pulled out. So it goes back to here. Well, they've fixed that by making a toolbox as well. So check this out. Booyah. Oh, the deck toolbox. What I like about it is see this flange and see this flange. It's not like uh, just a, it's not like just a gasket. It actually holds that much water out over the top. So you'll never get water in it, which is really, really nice. The other cool, really, really, really cool thing is, is for guys like Noah, no offense, or Steve Howard, no offense. Yeah, that was rough, is it's got a ladder. So you can actually pull this thing out, put it on the ground. It's got its own ladder that you can come up and access from the side, which is kind of cool, isn't it? You really threw some elbows. No, no, no elbows. No, no shots fired. It's just God made you small. So, <laughs> wow. so right now uh, I got a shooting bag in here and a shooting mat in here. So for going and practicing, um, throwing some bullets around. So that's what I have in here right now. So right now, obviously this is pretty empty. All I have is my shooting bag and a shooting mat in here, but it's kind of nice to have some places empty in your pickup, especially that have storage that's lockable storage. So what I'll do a lot of times is, is um, whoever I'm hunting with or whoever's coming hunting with me actually, they can throw all their stuff in here and it's dry and it's locked away and safe. And so a lot of times I won't heap it full of everything I have just so other people have room to put all their stuff too that they want, you know, safe and secure so all right so <laughs> on this side it's got this tray that you keep your knickknacks and tape and locking hitches and stuff like that is what i've been keeping in it and it's also got this super super sturdy box that you can take out and put whatever i just put my tools in here just my regular whether it be wrenches just stuff for fixing stuff on the on the way all right so here's all you got to do is text elk text elk to the number below right here. No one's gonna throw that right in here. Just do it right now and you could win this system right here that I have, so. All right, so let's head to the meat and potatoes. Let's go in the cab. Okay, back here, I have my bow right now. I could also put this in the box or the, or the deck slider and everything, but anyway, this is where I have it right now, so awesome. Got some SIG optics, stuff like that. This is what I keep in my cab, but the real, real magic of this pickup, the Tradesman, is right there in the front seat. This is where the this is where the magic happens. Come, I, I'm not. I don't even want to show you this. It's so nice. Okay, so this is where the magic kind of happens, guys. Comms, gotta have good comms. That's the biggest thing about. What does comms mean? What does comms mean? For people, not what for does me. comms mean? Communication. So you've got to have good comms. So growing up cutting trees, most all my life, uh, you always have a CB radio on you at all times. All right, we're usually on channel. Beep, yeah. So CB's must, going down from there. All right, second biggest thing. Okay, another thing I have, this is for charging batteries. It's just a, oh, what do they call it, inverter. So this is an inverter. It's just for charging extra cell phones, batteries, it's got plug-ins. You can run a laptop off of it, but it's super sketchy. It doesn't quite, it pulls it, but not quite. But anyway, always have that up here. I have extra batteries, things to plug batteries into, um, shotgun shells at all times. That's probably Noah's. Gross. The other big thing that I keep in my pickup that has helped us uh, a ton is a booster. So, yeah, we've used it a boatload, and I think even Cody will admit it's pretty legit. It's, so. Uh, yeah, so it's an antenna that goes on the top of your rig, and when I bought it, it was like 700 bucks, and I don't know what it is now, but they're, they're worth every penny if you're in the woods a lot. So all it is is it plugs into your cigarette lighter, and it runs up to four phones in your pickup at one time. So there's been times that we've had, to, you know, everybody else has to run to the top of the mountain to try to get service. I could just flip the booster on, and it gives us enough service to either talk or send text from right where we're at, depending on where we're camping. So works really, really well. And it's also good for, as far as like communication, if someone gets hurt, something of that nature, it works good for that too. But that's my truck, guys. It's a, it's a fine-tuned machine. And this is the first time I've ever let anybody really in the cab, I guess, uh, other than someone that I, that I actually appreciate being around. So 
So. Spent a lot of time right here. Okay. Don't touch it. Don't touch the seat. So that is my pickup. That's the kind of front country system that I've got running. It's all over the map. Guys, you could class it up, class it down. You could put whatever you want in here uh, as far as that goes. That's the cool thing about having your own rig with you. It's one thing that I really, really like to have when I'm going on a hunt. Like we have a hunt this year in Colorado with Onyx. And Dylan said, well, are you guys going to fly out here? And I'm like, ugh. I do not want to fly just because I want to have all my stuff with me and no matter what. I, I carry the kitchen sink. If you've seen me out in the woods, I've got stuff hanging off me. I've got, like Cody, he packs two pairs of socks. I pack however many pairs and two a day. So if I'm in there five days, I pack 10 pairs of socks with me. I change my socks all the time. My feet are pristine. They're beautiful. But I just, that's the kind of guy I am. I'll take the extra weight to do stupid things sometimes. So anyway, that's my system. And uh, hey, find your own system make it yours and uh anyway whatever it takes just get out there and go do it go out there and have the fun so stay tuned right after this we're going to do an uncut for yesterday's video a full born and raised every single call that we make you are going to get a package of it so anyway stay tuned right after this uncut yeah. back again uncut number two. Oh man um uh, it was awesome honestly reading through all the comments from last night's video um, I just appreciate everyone that took the time to write a question or, or had feedback. Uh, first, I saw a lot of comments about scammers. Yeah. Is this you guys? We got a lot on the text thread, all that. Definitely not us. Um, if the only way you're going to find out if you won something is right here on the uncuts at the end of the videos. Uh, so we're doing those live. So if you get someone to say, hey, uh, you won a Hoyt RX-7, that was one that I kept seeing. Send me your credit card information and you can pay for shipping. Absolutely do not share your credit card information. So um, report them. We've been trying to remove them, flag them, all that to the YouTube community. Uh, super frustrating, but first and foremost, it's not us. It's a scammer. It's not, a, it's not hacked. It's just a copycat account. So report them and uh, definitely do not give them your credit card information. So Yeah, and if you guys win, like Cody said, we're going to announce it here, which is the cool part. You'll get to see it live, your name announced from the day before. And then also we'll contact you privately. So yep. email or text will get a hold of you privately and they won't be in the replies on comments or anything like that. So with that, first winner of Elk Week gonna get a Calco package, so bomb bugle tube, cat road shuffle. We got the sound bite, call pouch, and uh, our seven mouth calls, and a set of meat bags, the infamous meat bags. So we have some in stock, guys. Uh, I know a lot of questions. We've been trying to keep them in stock. We have another big shipment coming here at the end of the month. So if you haven't got any, you'll have an opportunity. But that's gonna go to David Webb, David Webb, from Modesto, California. So yeah. David, congrats. Super stoked that uh, we could send you some calls. And that was for last night's video. And if you guys missed that, um, I'll link it up top. And that was just the how to sound like a real elk from yep. start to finish. So. And so if you entered yesterday, you're good to go for the rest of the week. Yep. If you're new to this series of Elk Week, you can text Elk Week to 541-256-2457. You'll get a response to know that you're confirmed and ready to go. So yep. that's giveaways. Why we're here today, well, to look at Noah's dirty stash yeah. and mullet, you know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the flowing locks. Uh, we're here to answer some questions. Uh, there were some great questions last night. We got a whole gambit, but we saw a trending theme about solo hunting. So I've got a group question here. Pat Weedman, sometimes you don't have the luxury to hunt with a group or go with you or even one extra hunter in your solo archery hunting. It'd be great to hear some strategies for calling, setting up as a solo hunter. Thanks for putting Elk Week. Pat, thanks for the question. There was a, yeah. a bunch of guys that jumped on there, guys and gals that talked about, hey, that's a, where I'm at. Solo hunting uh, can be very productive. Uh, if you guys saw last year, LOF4, Trevor called a bull in. Yeah. Noah was there with him filming, but Trevor did calling yeah. solo. Um, the big thing is moving in uh, and getting set up, but wherever that last sound comes from, you know, is where that elk's gonna be looking. So if you have the opportunity that you know that bull's coming, you've got cover, make that last sound, move up into your shooting position, stay silent from that point, and you know, let that curiosity get that bull to come that last closing distance. Um, and it's kind of a, a risky game too. I mean, it it's is. like you said, yeah. you may have a bull at 150 closing, 
and then you got to cut a little bit of distance, you know, put 40 yards in between you and where you last called from. And, yep. Um, but it's definitely a big, obviously, shown in the comments, but it's a big, big thing. And that's something that we don't have to deal with that much because like us, Trent put it in the video, we like to hunt in big groups uh, for that reason. So we can have a lot of noise behind our shooter. The, the one advantage you're going to have in solo hunting in thick cover is where you're going to have the opportunity to call those bulls in close. Yeah. Um, when you're in wide open country, you're going to find a big challenge um, for that. Uh, there was another question we'll touch on a little later, but might be the use of a decoy where you could deploy that and have that attention diverted from your location. Um, the other thing for solo calling is volume. And uh, one trick to do is like if that bull's coming in, don't scream in his face at that point. You know, he's, he's maybe 70, 80 yards out. He's coming, but he hangs up. Don't rip a bugle right in his face. Turn around. You can take like a gloved hand and muffle the end of the bugle tube, but turn back, silent, you know, yeah. try to try to uh, give the sound a different location than what you actually are calling from. Yeah. Um, that, that's definitely one trick of the trade uh, that, that works really well. And Cody mentioned getting in front of your last calling position and, and how thicker timber can be your friend if you're the solo guy. And a good rule for thumb of that is once you get into a timber patch, look, how far can I shoot? You know, what's my available distance here? If you only have lanes for 20, 25 yards, then you know that maybe you have to bump up 20, 25 yards to get to that distance where that elk just can barely not see where you were calling from before. And then the other key on the setup is the terrain. So if I, you know, it's going to dictate like where you're at, it's going to dictate how you set up. But if you can use the terrain of a finger ridge or something where um, kind of taking some of those turkey tactics or anything like that. I knew, they, see, I knew you were going to do I it. Know, as soon as I, you said terrain, I knew it. Uh, is getting in a position you're calling from where that bull has to come all the way into range in order to see that location. So maybe it's open and open country, and this is where you can use the break of those, those finger ridges. He's going to come up and try to crest that ridge. You can be just over the back side of that ridge and you can call him in close at that point. I and mean, that might be a 25 yard shot, but he has to come all the way to that spot in order to see where that sound's coming from. So kind of pay attention to those kind of minor terrain features and kind of work that into your setup as you're approaching that bull. Yeah. Um, great question though. I think solo hunting, um, I've been fortunate over the years, uh, before Born and Raised really is where I had the opportunity to call some bulls in solo, and it's super rewarding to call one in and kill it by yourself. It's just kind of awkward trying to give yourself a hug or a high five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great job team. Oh, great. Pat, that was an awesome question. Uh, you got one. Uh, this one's from Adam. He said, opening day, one week off work, bulls aren't quite worked up yet and aren't very vocal. What scenarios do you put together? Uh, how do you get into a bull's head that early in season? So I think the one thing early season is where that silent calling type approach. Um, way back in the day, there was a guy named Jim Horn that came and did a seminar in Roseburg, Oregon. I remember it specifically, and he built this whole like herd talk excitement. And he would set up silent, and he'd call it silent calling. Basically, that's when the bull is going to come in silent. So you're building, a, a, painting the picture of a herd it gets you know it's soft cow calls to start a soft bull bugle and all of a sudden you ramp that thing up yeah. and out of curiosity you know that's when those those early season bulls are going to come in silent um yeah. building that whole excitement and they're going to kind of the, peak the interest and in like oh, what's going on over there is a cow in heat yeah. now well and we like joked about it a ton last season the first week like oh we're gonna go in here and start the rut you know like we always joke about that but that pertains to what you're talking about yep. is even though you know that activity may not be fired up completely in that area you might be able to peak interest so yeah and you could check out actually last year's very first episode of land of the free four we glassed up some distance bulls um they were doing their thing they moved in the timber we slid in there and did exactly that painted yeah. the whole picture and after 40 minutes all of a sudden those three bulls started walking in. Didn't so. say a word. And, Never you know, did. Yeah. Yep. But they, it was too much. They had to come and check it out. So yeah, early season can be good. The other early season tactic that you may may do if you're especially by yourself, maybe sit a wallow. Um, yeah. The it seems like as the rut cranks up, they might hit it more often, but it can be a good uh, ambush point. So, but for me, I like calling. So that's what yeah. I'm gonna do. Yeah. Uh, next question, Jonathan Weiss. 
If I'm hunting heavily, heavily pressured area with lots of elk, is it smart to stay quiet, sneak up on a located herd, or call in, risk another hunter coming into your calls or herds calls? This is where he also talks about uh, using a decoy. Is that a good thing? So heavily pressured areas can be super fun and super frustrating because other people. And uh, I think the, the thing about it is if you know, if case in point, if you hear a hunter and hear a bull, dude, he's got that, like yeah. let him hunt it, you know, go find another one. Um, be respectful of the other people. If, uh, if they're parked on a road, dead end road, and they're the only truck there, go find another different area. With that said, if you're that guy that's already in on them, um, definitely could be a good tactic just to shadow that herd. And you know, if you are gonna call, um, it may not be at the point when those elk are up moving around, but you just stay close in the earshot, keep them around. And then when they bed down, that might be your opportunity where a lot of those hunters are gonna go back to camp. Yeah. They're gonna do the lunch nap, all that stuff, um, to call that bull out of the bed um, at that point. So I would definitely still use calling, but be strategic at, at how how and when you're using that calling. Yeah, and how many times have you been on public land and been on a herd and maybe they bump your way and you go, man, I wonder if someone actually bumped those elk into us. Maybe you heard a hunter on the backside. So stay in the game, give them their space. There's plenty of elk and you'll get on them. Yeah, and I, I think honestly in that heavily, with a lot of elk, I think that midday from 11 o'clock to two o'clock is gonna be your better opportunity to call them in, so. But stay with them, listen to them in the morning and get them killed yeah. in the midday. Uh, Justin V, you stumble across a herd bull bugling and chasing his cows around and there's not many satellites around to compete with him. You have been silently sitting and watching as elk move around but don't come within 80 yards of you. What do you do? I think this is where the fear of failure comes in. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people, they get on elk and it's exciting, but they don't want to mess it up. Yeah. So they don't do anything. They kind of freeze. And that, he already had the hard part done. Exactly. He, got, he found a herd that was talking and he got in close without yeah. being detected. The hard part's done. Yeah, so I mean, there's it, it all depends on the terrain. If you feel like you can get a slip in there and sneak on that bull and get him killed, do that. If that's like, it's wide open, it's not gonna have, not gonna, work i think this is where it goes back to like let them move off you know that when you start calling them say they're out in a clear cut or they're out in a meadow if you're hunting rockies um, if you start calling on them and they're 100 yards and there's 100 yards of open ground chances are you are not going to call that elk in it's yeah. very very uncommon to have that elk just trudge all the way across the wide open yeah. it's happened and i've seen it and, yeah um but uh the big thing there is let them move off get in that timber and then make your move on them but don't be afraid to mess it up like the hard part like noah said you found them you were in close um let them do their thing move off in the timber and then go get them killed yeah i mean if your wind's favorable shadow that herd and especially if it's in the morning and they're out feeding which it kind of sounds like feeding morning behavior shadow that herd like you said get in them when they bed and then then make your move yep uh, all right, Shred Doc asks, if a bull is responding to only cow calls, will you keep cow calling? Or at what point do you add in a challenge bugle? Go with what got you there. Yeah. So um, I specifically remember 2017, Spec just shot a bull in Colorado. It was Trent and uh, Steve and I, and we were waiting for him to die. We were listening. There's bulls screaming in the basin. It's like, we got to go try this. So Trent yeah. and I dropped down there, cow called, bull cracked off instantly like cut me off with a cow call. Cow called again and bugled again. I never bugled once. That bull came into 12 yards and winded us. But I don't think that bull was solo. He was he was responding, he was searching for that cow. Stick with what's working. I think if I would have introduced a bugle, it would have changed his demeanor. He may have all of a sudden hung up and like, ah, I don't know if I'm ready for a yeah. fight, but he was looking for that cow. So yeah. if a bull's firing off on cow calls, stick with that. Um, if now all of a sudden things change, he hangs up. That's when you start bringing more cards into the, the deck and, and start playing through that. Another example of Steve's bull last year, uh, we got out, we started working a road system, locate bugled, nothing. We go to the next point, cow call, 
two different bulls torch off. And then from that point on, all we did was, I mean, we cow called that bull all the way across the canyon, 800 yards, and he came in. Yeah, it just reiterates, like, play with, stick with what works and go for that. Yeah, and it was the same deal. He was torching off instantly. Yeah, so. when you do bring in the challenge bugle, like I said, if if all else fails and that's your, your last straw, bring it in, but don't, don't go there all of a sudden just out of the blue, so, yeah. That's it for comments. Uh, we're just gonna do, before we finish up, we wanna send a shout out to Mike. We want you to have a great elk season. Uh, this is from your son and we just hope you have a wonderful elk season. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, guys, giveaway. We've got a EXO pack decked. Make sure you're entered into that. You're, uh, we're gonna have two winners in tomorrow's video. Yeah. So uh, make sure your name's in the hat for that. Um, also, if you guys are aspiring filmmakers, like you see yeah. a lot of this Elk Week content, what's going to happen next year is we're going to showcase some of the viewers' content here on the channel, and we're super excited. So if, uh, if you have some aspiration to make a video, go grab a camera, shoot it this fall, and uh, hopefully you'll be on this Elk Week next year with us. Yeah, and why we're doing that is we just want to we want to show off your guys' work and show off your guys' hunts and, and tell your stories on our platform. And if you don't have a camera, you can use your cell phone. I mean, there's crazy things you can do with your cell phones now. And just remember to tell a good story and submit those videos by next spring. And, you know, it could be your video going up on the channel next, next July. Yeah, but super stoked. The energy around Elk Week, everyone's fired up. Season is right around the corner. I, me personally, I'm like trying to get the clock to slow down right now because when it, someone says 40 days, I'm just like, oh. Yeah, and keep the comments rolling in. We're gonna do an uncut after every single video to announce the giveaways, and then also just to answer those questions like we did today. So tomorrow's video, or sorry, today's video is the gear review. Yeah, gear so, up. Hopefully, like I said, we get a lot of questions on yeah. backcountry, front country type stuff. Uh, I think we had the whole gambit there covered pretty well, but um, hit some more questions down there. We'll answer them in tomorrow's video. Tomorrow coming up, we have shot angles. Yeah. So we kind of talked through the perfect broadside shot, quartering away to the quarter two, the frontal, all that kind of show some, some real time footage of how and when those shots are taken and how effective they are. Um, followed, we've got do's and don'ts on Thursday. So that's kind of our mistakes, what we've learned over the years. Here's some things to try to do, and here's some things you don't want to do. And then on Friday to cap off Elk Week, it's 20 bulls, 20 minutes, insane elk hunting action. Yeah. So. And I think you guys will love the shot angles video. I mean, it's awesome what these guys did talking through it, and then the footage mixed in. Not only are they going to talk about it, but you're going to get to see real world examples of each shot angle at different distances and, and how that actually works on a real live bull elk. So if we've given you any value, I have one request to do. If you could screenshot this, text it to your buddies, share this video, um, share the calling video or the videos coming up this week that would mean the world to us. Just to get the word out about Elk Week and what we're doing here at Born and Raised. With that, yeah. we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys.